peach schnapps. You've probably seen it, you probably had it, but did you know you can make drinks other than just fuzzy navels with it? Now, peach schnapps, in my opinion, kind of gets a bad rap, and it's understandable. I mean, it came out in 1984 during what some people call the dark ages of cocktails. Now, that's all well and good, and it doesn't help that during this time also there were a lot of really crappy drinks that were made with non-fresh ingredients, non, well, just imitation type ingredients like peach schnapps. It's made using imitation flavor. But all is not lost. This has to be, right? It has to be usable in some interesting cocktails. So we're going to try three out today other than the fuzzy navel. Obviously, most people know that combination of orange juice, peach schnapps very well. Uh, however, we're going to use it in a couple other ways with a few different base spirits. So let's get started and make some really cool drinks. And if you like these drinks and you want me to make some more peach schnapps stuff, hit me up in the comments, hit the like button. That way I know. If I see you like it, I make more of it. That's how this works. This drink here is called a jacuzzi. Now, I like this because it seems like it'd be a mashup of a sex on the beach slash mimosa type thing. So it looked neat to me, and I decided, hey, we're going to make this. So first thing you want to do is grab yourself a shaker tin. We're going to start off with an ounce of peach schnapps going in here. Once you have your ounce of peach schnapps, we're going to come behind that with some gin. Now, it's going to be half an ounce of gin. And I know a lot of people say, I don't like gin, blah, blah, blah. You know what? If you want to use vodka instead, be my guest. And it might change the flavor profile just a little bit, but I don't think you're going to kill the drink by doing that. Then, an ounce of orange juice going in there as well. Now, we're going to add a little bit of ice to this mix and give it a nice shake. Once we have that shaken, we're going to do a champagne flute because, like I said, this is kind of a mimosa type mix. And uh, it's interesting. So you just want to strain that mixture in. And that should take up about half of the glass, maybe just a little bit more, depending. Also, following that mimosa, the mimosa pattern is going to be the inclusion of some champagne. So you just want to fill that the rest of the way up with some champagne. Nice little bit of the bubble there. And a nice little garnish here. That's right. A little uh, quarter wedge of orange. That is a jacuzzi cocktail. Oh, this is really good. It's a nice little peach spritzer type of a cocktail. It's light. You always feel fancy when you have a glass like this in your hand, don't you? This drink is commonly referred to as peach me. And it's got a twist on a Wisconsin-style old-fashioned. Now, uh, Wisconsin-style old-fashioned, of course, being the kind that have the muddled orange and cherries. So it's not a traditional style. But uh, it's a very simple drink. We're going to start off with a sugar cube. Put a sugar cube in the bottom. I'm going to put in a couple dashes of orange bitters, orange bitters, into the mix. About three or four, just to saturate the sugar cube. And we're going to put in an orange wedge, a couple cherries. I'm using the cheapo cherries here and not my good Luxardo cherries. These are kind of like your Sunday ice cream sundae cherries. The stems and all on them. Okay. So once we have all that in there, we're going to muddle this. You just want to smash it up like a dang fruit salad. Yeah.
All right, so now it's time to start adding in the booze. Gonna be two and a half ounces of bourbon. I am using some Evan Williams bottled in bond. Why? Because it's a little higher proof, it's 100 proof, and I think it's a pretty damn good pour for the price. So that is why I'm using this Evan Williams. And we're going to do a half an ounce pour of our peach schnapps. Okay. Put a nice large cube in there and give it a stir. You want to stick another uh, piece of orange in the top, some cherries, whatever the case may be. Uh, you basically have a fruit salad looking drink. And uh, this is the peach meal. This is a solid drink, I gotta admit. Uh, the cocktail purists would absolutely hate seeing someone muddle fruit for an old fashioned and uh, putting peach knobs in it. But hey, I don't think it's bad. I think it's a pretty good combo. Uh, it's a little powerful up front, especially probably because I used 100 proof bourbon. It's got a little more kick to it than if you just use a traditional 80 proof, but uh, I like it. This next one kind of goes off the rails a little bit. It's called the Weeping Jesus. Why? I have no clue, but it's really intriguing to me because it lets me use absinthe. And uh, I haven't used absinthe in any drinks, so why not? Very interesting combinations going on here. I'm going to start with the absinthe first. It's going to be an ounce pour of absinthe. Absinthe, of course, a very potent uh, wormwood flavored liqueur, liquor. Very potent. Has a nice anise flavor to it. Uh, it does not make you hallucinate. Just keep that in mind. We're going to follow that up with an ounce as well of the uh, peach schnapps. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, two very potent flavor profiles mixed in here. Following up with an ounce of grenadine syrup. Again, very intriguing flavors. Here we're going to add some ice and shake this. smell from the anise, the, the absinthe, is very, it's a high licorice smell, very potent. So this ought to be interesting. You want small cubes of ice here. Finely smashed cubes. I'm not going to frappe them, but uh, very nice small pebbles in there. We're going to strain this off. A nice red hue to it. Oh. And uh, it's just going to get topped with some lemon lime soda. Nice little shot of spray in there. No garnish necessary. That is the weeping Jesus. This is interesting. Very licorice smell to it. Wow. That is a strange combination, but it, it works. Kudos to the creator of that one. It's very odd. It has a subtle sweetness to it at the beginning. The peach doesn't really stand out. Um, it's just very nice, sweet flavor in the beginning. Uh, and it finishes with this like really slight hint of licorice. Not, you know, if you're someone that doesn't like black jelly beans, it's not that potent of a licorice flavor. It's just a real subtle 
hint of it on the back. Um, this is not at all what I thought this drink was going to taste like. This is one of the best drinks that I've mixed in a long time on this show, honestly. If you have absinthe and schnapps, like, try this. The Weeping Jesus. So there you have it. Three drinks with peach schnapps. And maybe I haven't changed your mind or your opinion on peach schnapps, but hopefully I've made you at least think that maybe, just maybe, this particular liqueur does deserve a spot on your professional bar. You know? Let's not snub our noses at it just because it's a slightly artificially flavored beverage. Maybe it has a purpose. That's all for me. And if you want to see more of my content, you can hit subscribe down below, the bell icon. That way you don't miss anything. You'll get notifications. It's great. Try it out. So until next time, thank you for watching this. And, uh, hey, let's drink.